Well, I'm delighted now to welcome two outsiders. Welcome back to Outsiders. He's spoken to us many times before, Alan Moran. Alan has been working on a very important project, one which has uh, set out to find out how much you pay, your family pays, for all this virtue signalling climate change rubbish via renewables. Welcome to Outsiders. Alan, how are you, mate? Pretty good, thank you. Now, kick it off, tell us about your project, what you set out to find, and then tell us the results. Well, there's a popular number about uh, the costs of environmental policies on the consumer, uh, and it's meticulously developed this number by the uh, Australian Energy Market Commission. Uh, and it comes at $90 per year, about 6.5% of your bill. But it, what, in fact, that does is, although it is carefully collected, it only covers about one sixth of the cost. It covers, for example, the cost of the renewable energy target. It covers for things like the uh, the the, the uh, uh, solar uh, uh, solar rooftop solar uh, uh, mechanisms. Uh, but what it doesn't cover is is various other aspects. For example, that ninety dollars uh, just for the regulations has to be added to other things. That, that is. For example, the cost of government soft loans and government grants to renewable energy, to wind and to solar, and, that, and they, they add about $150. Then there's the effect of the renewables in terms of, well, they have a parasitic effect on the rest of the, of the, rest of the generation by forcing out of production uh, generation, mainly coal, which would be much cheaper to run. And therefore, what has happened since the major generator of, of Hazelwood closed uh, a couple of years ago, prices doubled. So if you are, if you include that doubling of prices, that's another uh, two hundred dollars or so, which, which would go onto the household bill. Then we've had last month the uh, Australian Energy Market Operator coming out with numbers with a whole new uh, spectrum of, of, of uh, transmission lines and, and other measures. And we've all already got the the Snowy Two in the pipeline, which is all of which is designed to to shore up the inherently uh, irregular uh, and unpredictable uh, uh, renewable energy and therefore allow it to operate. So when you add that, that's about another 70 or $75. When you add all that together, you, don't, you come to not just the cost to the consumer of $90, but more like $536 per year. In other words, it's, it's not 6.5% of your bill, uh, of your electricity bill, but it's more like 39% of your electricity bill. Rita. We are told that renewables are the future, uh, that there is no question this is just going to happen and we should embrace it and get on board quickly. Uh, around the world, is that what, what's happening as well from, from what you've uh, researched? Well, it's happening in, in uh, EU uh, in, and in some other Western economies, uh, but it's not happening in China, in India, in Indonesia. So, you know, th this started, Rita, with the, uh, the whole notion that we've got to reduce our emission levels uh, back to net zero at some stage. Um, well, that might well be the... We, we may well be moving in that direction in Australia and, and in the EU, but they're not in other places. And those other places mm. actually account for about 70 or 80 percent of the total emissions, uh, because <laughs> it's not only those, those fast-growing developing countries, but it's also the United States, uh, which has is, which is renounced the whole notion of renewables as a whole. One state, of course, hasn't renounced them, and that is California, uh, which has had some disastrous outages over the last week, yes. because they, 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 they're about five years ahead of us in the renewable game. They're about 25 or 30, in fact, 30 percent of their energy is renewables at the present time. And uh, once it was when it went hot and, and windless, they suddenly found that they couldn't uh, they couldn't supply enough, and uh, they, they had to uh, uh, have rolling blackouts. So, uh, Alan, just tell me, you say five hundred and thirty-six dollars per household, uh, but that's just direct costs, isn't it? What about the yeah. indirect costs, right. and what are they? You see, about half of the electricity which is consumed, a little bit less, uh, is is by households. So that five hundred and thirty-six. Uh, comes to about six and a half billion dollars if you multiply it by the number of households, but that's only about half the cost. So the other half the cost brings us our total to something of the order of thirteen billion dollars per year. That's every year we're spending thirteen billion dollars in 
trying to get rid of coal and trying to interject uh, renewable energy, wind and solar, uh, in a system which is actually inherently making us much more expensive in electricity terms and, uh, and is costing us considerable amounts of angst in reliability. Uh, and that's a really, really important number. $13 billion is a huge, huge uh, albatross around the neck of the Australian public and the Australian economy. Uh, and it's a very important one for Australia because we, our, our industries are essentially beneficiation and, and various aspects of, of, of improving on, uh, uh, on productivity in terms of uh, agricultural and minerals. Uh, and these depend upon competitively priced energy. But what we've seen, and we had not, not very long ago, less than 10 years ago, we had energy which was electricity, which was just about the cheapest in the world. Now it's almost, it's amongst the most expensive now. James. Alan, I want to ask you a question. With all of this uh, money that's going to renewables, um, whatever the final number is and whatever the cost of distorting the market is, the end game here is bringing down global warming. So can you tell me in your calculations, did you quantify how much the global temperature or the Australian temperature would drop as a result of all of these efforts? Well, I haven't done that, but that, that has been done by other people. They, they, in fact, the chief uh, scientist offered a number a few years ago and said it was virtually nothing. Uh, the, the answer is that we, we were one and a half percent of emissions. Uh, we're actually only talking in terms of uh, energy about a third of those. So, you know, you, you can sort of multiply that, that up and come to the answer is virtually nothing. Uh, some, well, people for... would say, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. some people would say, sorry, some people would say we basically uh, we, we have to do our bits, etc. But in, in, the, in the end product, is our bit is is, is it, a is insignificant, but others aren't following on. The, the developing world will not uh, purposefully increase the costs of their energy as Australia appears uh, willing to do so. So, Alan, just finally, uh, just very briefly, so we know that uh, whatever we do isn't going to do much. Uh, you're saying $13 billion a year, every single year of taxpayers' money, household money, goes into renewables. Uh, so we know, for example, that in America... Their uh, voters there, 57% of Americans, would happily pay $1 a month to solve climate change or tackle climate change. That's $12 a year. Australians are a bit more generous. Um, uh, they've said that they will pay, on average, $200 a year. They're willing to pay up to $200 a year. That was a 2020 ABC survey. Uh, $200 bucks a year. How much? What is the grand total? In your estimate, in your exclusive report that will be going to Parliament... Uh, to, uh, via Malcolm Roberts' One Nation. What is your uh, number that you say that you claim every single household in Australia is paying every single year for this renewables fantasy? Well, the average has got to be uh, uh, around uh, 1,300, and I'm not sure that that $200 from the ABC is an accurate uh, uh, indication of what people would be prepared to pay in Australia. I've seen much lower numbers than that. But certainly, if the 200 is correct, we're paying you know, six times that 200 already in terms of the household bills we pay for electricity and the on costs that we pay for our goods and services which incorporate this more expensive electricity. $1,300 per year. That's what Australian households are paying, according to Alan Moran, for the renewables fantasy. Well, fascinating stuff. Thanks for coming on, Alan, and well done on your work. Thank you very much.